It is such a pleasure to talk to you. I've been a fan for as long as you've been making movies. So, you know, I'm I'm really curious to talk about the Adams family since it was your first directorial debut, basically. Um, you know, in terms of making it, what stuck with you from making it? Do you do you think you learned lessons on the set or what what was it like? Sure. I think uh, you know, I had formerly been a cinematographer. And as a cinematographer, oftentimes the actors are your enemies. They rehearse this way, looking this way. So you're light for that. And then they get on the set and now they've decided they're looking there. Or you you rehearse a long walk and talk, you know, uh, and and they don't know their lines. So they're walking and talking while they're reading and they don't get very far. So you light for 100 feet, but then they go into hair and makeup and they learn their lines and now they're got the energy and they walk much faster and they keep walking out of their light because they didn't rehearse it that way. So I think the big takeaway for me personally at the end of Adam's family was I discovered I actually loved actors and I loved working with them. And I realized they're what makes a movie special. In the case of Adam's family, we had Raul Julia, and no one has loved life more than Raul Julia or Gomez, you know? So that was perfect casting. Angelica was great. Chris Lloyd was amazing because he's like 6'2 and skinny. And between the time you'd say roll camera and the time you said action, he just became a short squat guy. I don't know how he did it. And then of course you've got Christina Ricci. So uh, I learned to love actors on that movie. You know, speaking of Christina Ricci, it is fascinating to me that that she was so early in her career when, you know, working with her. What was that like? Because it, it seems like she was incredible from the beginning. Was she was she what we expect as a kid too? She was nine when we started and 10 at some point. Uh she was so much smarter than me. She was so much more articulate that it was intimidating, uh, you know, and she also was a really brilliant actor. I mean, there's a scene where, where Fester puts Christina, puts Wednesday to bed and on her own, Christina does this, you know, uh, which is the way you put dead people, you know, in a coffin and somehow Christina decided that's the way she slept. It was not my suggestion or idea. And she, she was brilliant, just lovely. Uh, I understand that on the Blu-ray, the Mahushka dance has been restored. Uh, what, what was that like to, were you involved at all in the fact that it's being restored on the Blu-ray? Oh, totally. So I got a call from Paramount five or six months ago that it was the 30th anniversary. Uh, and that they were going to put out a 4K, they were going to recolor time the movie and, you know, get rid of the dust and dirt and noise and put out a 4K version. So A, that excited me because I could go back in and color time it again and make it more beautiful. Some of the scenes I've in the original version were too blue. There were some other issues. So that was exciting. And then and I said to Paramount, hey, listen, there is a much better version of the Mamushka. Is there any way you can go to your vaults and see if you can find the original cut, the work print of the original cut, and then find the negative to match it so that we could put it in? And they went back. They did some detective work. They found it. So now, because I always regretted cut it, cutting it, we, uh, in, in the theatrical version, you come into it halfway in progress. And that was done because I thought the movie was a little long and I wanted to shorten it, but I regretted it instantly. Once we locked the picture, I regretted it. And this will be the only time in my career that I ever release a different version of a movie on, on digital, because I believe there should be one version of a movie. Hmm. There's only one version of a Picasso painting of Guernica, and it's not like the director's cut where he added three more panels. So I think there should be one version, but in this case, and it will be, I promise you, the only case ever in my career, I put back, I've lengthened something I've done 
And it's, I think it's going to be really rewarding for the audiences who love Adam's family to see the entire mamushka. It's fantastic. And Rao Julia is amazing. Well, you know, speaking of the Adams family as a whole, what do you think has made it stick with people for so many generations? Because it's it's now going on many years longer than I, maybe some people expected. So I'm curious, not just as a movie, but as an entity, what do you think has made it stick with people? I think people like the the subtle darkness of it, but the wonderful family relationships. Mm. You know, Gomez and Morticia love each other more than any other couple. Uh, they're perfect parents because they let their kids, you know, electrocute each other or play with guillotines. But as much as they love each other, it's not a saccharine kind of relationship. It's there's a dark, uh, a little secret darkness to it, a little quirkiness. And I think people like that. It's both about family, but it's sort of off kilter family. And I think that's been its longevity. Also, it's so visual. I mean, Charles Adams drawings were extraordinary. I love them. There's there's something that you capture in, captured in making it that I also felt that there there was just this element of weirdness that isn't in a lot of films and that it is so hard to capture. Did you did you think about that while you're filming it? Because it is a very visceral thing almost that that some directors don't know how to capture, I guess. It's it's my personality. I have a certain quirky darkness, you know, you know, uh, I've been in plane crashes. I was uh, I was in a plane crash and at 14000 feet, I knew uh, I was going to die. Uh, I was in a private jet flying to Los Angeles for a studio. So the whole time I practiced different line readings of and now I die. So first I went and now I die. And then I went and now I die. And then I went and now I die. So I went through all of those just as some that's not something that most people do when they're about to die in a plane crash is practice different line readings of that line. So I've always had a quirky, slightly dark sensibility. And if you look at uh, the Three Men in Black movies, Pushing Daisies, the three years I did a series of unfortunate events, there's always something that's a little quirky, a little off, a little world creating. It's what I'm drawn to. And I was lucky enough to have the first movie I directed be The Addams Family. In fact, the only reason I directed it was because it was those Charles Adams drawings that I grew up with. I read the New Yorker every week from the time I was seven or eight. Actually, my parents read the New Yorker. I would just look through it to find the Charles Adams drawing, which were always visual and had layers of depth and information in different parts of the frame. So it was very much a perfect first movie for me to direct. Well, thank you so much for the time. I really appreciate it. it. It's such a tremendous thing revisiting it now because I feel like it's it stands up so well after all these years. Uh, last thing I want to just quickly ask is, do you rewatch your films? No, I, no? I had to because I, I, I only find things wrong with them, you know, uh, uh, and I, I've got better things to do, but I want others to watch them. Well, thank you so much. Uh, very big fan. It is really a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much. A pleasure. Thank you. 